So Giancarlo Rota had the idea to systematically study the number of ways to put balls into boxes. And Joel Spencer, who was a graduate student of Richard Stanley at MIT, called this the 12-fold way. We are going to systematically fill in these 12 areas with formulas for how to put N balls into K boxes. We're going to have different constraints on the balls. There are two different ways we consider it. The balls are distinct, so we can tell which ball's which, or they're identical, in which case we can't. The same two options exist for the boxes, either distinct or identical. Now, in terms of how we place the balls, we can do it freely. That's one thing we always want to consider. We can do it injectively. So balls into boxes is sort of like maps, and that's where the nomenclature comes from. Here, we're thinking that in every box, we can have at most one ball. And then we can also do it surjectively. So that means that every box has to have at least one ball. So these are the ways we're going to do it. We're going to go row by row, and let's start with the first row. So in this case, we have distinct balls going into distinctly labeled boxes. Let's think about how that could happen. So in row one, everything is distinct. Let's look at the unrestricted case. Okay, so what are our choices for ball one? Well, any box. So there are K choices for ball one. What about for ball two? Again, any box, and there are K choices there. And I can tell which I did, so it, I can discriminate between the balls. So each time I have these choices, so ball one and ball two and ball three, all the way down to ball N, any box. So there are K choices. All together, I have K to the N. So that's what we'll put here. There are K to the N ways to put N balls into K boxes. Okay, what about the injective approach? In this case, we're gonna make sure that every box has at most one ball. Okay, so let's go through it again. Ball one, any box. Starts off the same, there are K choices. What about for ball two? Ball one's already been placed. So we can't do any box, but we can do any other box. So there are gonna be K minus one choices here. And we continue down and then by the time we get to the last ball, we're gonna have any other box again. We can't pick any of the ones that we already did. So we're gonna have K minus N plus one. And this is the falling factorial, K falling factorial N. K times K minus one, all the way down to K minus N plus one. That's what's gonna go in here. K falling factorial N. So that's sort of like having a permutation. And what about the last case, the surjective case? In this case, every ball, sorry, every box gets put into, or gets at least one ball, okay? So we can think of the boxes form a set partition, which we just discussed, a set partition of the balls, which are numbered from one into n. So a set partition, remember, we don't care about the order of the blocks, but here we're, we're doing a set partition of n into k blocks, into k non-empty, right, boxes. But now we can order those boxes in k factorial ways because they're k boxes. So what goes in here, well, there are the k factorial ways to do it and the number of set partitions is what we're calling the Stirling number of the second kind. So, this is the way that we can do everything. If we have distinct balls and distinct boxes, arbitrarily, k to the n. If we want to make sure that it's injective at most one ball per box, we have a falling factorial. And if we want to make it surjective, every box gets at least one ball, then k factorial times the Stirling number of the second kind.